Hey guys, Ryan from Morano Collective here, and in this quick video, I'm gonna go over Google Analytics and show you some of the things that I do within Google Analytics to track user behavior and to collect some data and understand what's going on on my website. Before we jump in, I do wanna say that Google Analytics is a massive um, you know, program, and there's so much that you can do, and it can get overwhelming at, uh, at points, um, but I've kind of figured out what works for me and I'm gonna share that with you. Um, and so if you follow uh, you know, this video and do what I do, you'll actually be able to get some valuable information for the users on your website and then be able to make some decisions based off of the information. So again, the reason that I use Google Analytics um, a lot of times is to judge the user's behavior and make decisions for design and for content uh, based off of user data. So that'll make a little bit more sense once we kind of look into the data. Um, the home page is pretty uh, standard and um, obviously you can kind of understand what's going on pretty easily. Uh, in this first box here we have users and sessions. These are just people that are visiting your website and these are the amount of sessions that these users have created. Uh, bounce rate is how many, the percentage of uh, people that are just leaving your website without clicking around. Now again, this bounce right here, you can see mine is pretty high and a lot of people's are pretty high because it's an overall site bounce rate. I actually prefer to look at bounce rate um, on a individual page level. Um, and the same with the session duration. Session duration is just how long people are spending on your website. And this is an average of every single page on my website. I like, again, I like to look at the session duration uh, for individual pages, and I'll actually show you how you can do that um, down below. A uh, little quick tip is you can toggle, um, you know, how many days of data you want to see uh, by just clicking this little button here. Um, okay, so we're scrolling down again. You can take a look at all this. This is just how you're acquiring users, where your users are, uh, and when your users visit. Fun stuff you can kind of study. Um, but this here, uh, you know, the pages that your users are visiting and the top devices that your users are using um, are very important um, aspects of Google Analytics that I'm going to talk about here uh, for a second. So starting with the top devices, you want to make sure that you understand what devices your users are using on your website because you need to make sure that you are looking at the design of your website and the content of your website on those devices. So if your mobile is very high, with a lot of your guys' websites, mobile will be higher than desktop um, because you're creatives and you guys have portfolios and you're showing your work <clears throat> and a lot of people are finding you through Instagram, so then they're visiting your website through a mobile device. With that said, if your mobile percentage is really high, make sure that everything you do when you design your website is designed mobile first because that's what people are gonna be looking at the majority. A lot of people design their website desktop first and then they kind of you know, shuffle the mobile around and they go, well, my desktop website is amazing. But according to this, uh, you know, most people aren't looking at your desktop they're looking at your mobile. However, mine is a little bit different. You can see that my desktop is 74%, my mobile is only 25.6%, and that's because I have a lot of how-to tutorials on my blog, and so a lot of people do opt in to watch these tutorials um, on their desktop. A lot of them are at work, and they're ready to work on their website, and so they open up my website and go to my blog on their desktop. So it's a good idea to kind of just get familiar with the top devices. And again, you can toggle this to 90 days and you can see this changes just a little bit, but overall, most people visit my website on desktop um, and then only about 26, 25 to 26% of the uh, users are on mobile devices. I still focus heavily on mobile design as well, just because I want to make it very easy for my users on a mobile device to navigate my website. Um, but if this number was any higher, it would be mobile first design hands down for sure. Um, and then tablet, um, usually when I look at people's accounts, tablets usually under 2%, so it's nothing that you have to really uh, worry about. Um, if you are using Show It, the nice thing is 
that depending on the size of the tablet, it's just going to use the desktop design or the mobile design. So you don't really have to worry about designing a whole entire tablet um, site for your website either. All right, jumping into what pages do your users visit the most? Uh, this is really, really powerful. So again, let's toggle this for 90 days and I'm going to look at um, the number one pages on my website. So you can see that this page here, Show It vs. WordPress, um, is probably my most popular page. And the nice thing about that is um, most of this, I would, I would say probably 90 to 95 percent um, of these these visitors of these page views are all organic search um, organic traffic sorry meaning that these are all new people coming to my website which is really exciting and this I guess is a little uh, bunny trail off but that's the power of SEO and creating a blog that attracts organic traffic I get tons of traffic uh, just from this one blog post and as you continue to write more blog posts you're going to continue to find that more organic traffic uh, is you know coming to your website now so if we click pages report here's the fun part here we can actually see all of the data for these specific pages themselves so here's that show versus wordpress page again you can see that um, this is again went down to seven days let's do 30 days here uh, in the last 30 days I've had 372 page views for this uh, you know this page alone um, and 334 unique page views uh, the average time on page is 3 minutes and 44 seconds uh, which is pretty good so that tells me that people aren't just sitting on the page and then leaving after 15 seconds they're actually taking the time to read through the blog posts um, and uh, you know get the information that they want now with that said this is a blog post so with blog posts it's very very likely that people will bounce out of the uh, blog post once they're done um, I've checked you know a ton of different uh, users accounts uh, some of my clients um, and the thing that I find is that blog posts in general have a higher bounce rate and that's not necessarily a bad thing and let me explain why if you have a high average time on page so I would say over two to th over three minutes is a great average time um, on page uh, if it has a high bounce rate it's still okay it just means that people are getting the information that they need and then they're leaving now if you have a page that only has you know 15 seconds average time on page and an 80 to 90 percent bounce rate then you know that the content on that page is not good enough for most of the users um, and you need to update the content uh, so with that said, low average time on page and high bounce rate is usually a sign that you need to update the content or update the design. But a high average time on page um, is always a good thing regardless if the bounce rate is high or low. Um, so I would uh, encourage you guys to jump into this uh, you know, pages report here. Check out your top pages. Um, this is going to give you a good idea on what's working and what's not. Obviously, you can go back and you can show, let's see, like 100 pages um, or more. And then you can scroll to, you know, to the very bottom here. Let's find one of these pages. Uh, you know, something like this, slugs and permalinks. I don't get a lot of traffic for that. So that's something that I can actually go through and work on updating the information on this blog post so that the average time on page increases and that the bounce rate decreases. Uh, so hopefully this has given you some value. Um, if you guys have any other questions about Google Analytics, please reach out and we'll talk soon. All right, bye.